Welcome to my lecture online. Let's now take a look at an interesting application of a second order parallel circuit. So here we have what we would call an airbag switch. The way an airbag switch works in general is that we have a connection to a 12 volt battery. Most cars have a 12 volt battery. Notice that we have a capacitor in parallel or in series, however you want to look at it, relative to the voltage supply and we have a switch that turns off the rest of the circuit. At a moment in time when the airbag needs to be activated, the switch will go to the other side, disconnecting it from the battery, but now the capacitor has 12 volts across the capacitor terminals, and that voltage and the, the charges on the capacitor will then drive the, the rest of the circuit, and what we're trying to determine is the voltage across the three ohm resistor. Notice that initially, there will be no voltage drop across the resistor because there will be no current going through the resistor initially as the switch closes. And then also, initially, there will be no current going through the inductor, but slowly current will flow through the inductor, current will flow to, through the resistor, the voltage across the resistor will increase and reach some maximum value. It'll do that fairly quickly. And the idea is that we want to find the time that the voltage across the resistor will reach a maximum value. So it looks something like this. So we start with zero voltage across the resistor, it'll very quickly rise to a, a maximum value and then it'll start oscillating. So the airbag will be activated when it reaches a maximum value and we're trying to figure out what the time is to reach that, that maximum value. So what we need to do is solve the circuit kind of the same way that we've, we've solved it before. So we have to realize that the voltage across the capacitor at time equals zero, well that's going to be 12 volts. The steady state voltage, now let's take a look at that. What happens when the switch goes to the other direction? The charges here will begin to oscillate back and forth between the inductor and the capacitor and also partially will go to the resistor. As the charge will go to the resistor, there's energy taken out of the circuit and eventually all the energy will be dissipated by the resistor and there will no more voltage across the capacitor. So we can see that the steady state voltage will be zero volts at the end. So what else do we need to know? Well, let's try to set up the circuit by calculating the alpha. And the alpha is going to be 1 over 2RC. In this case, it'll be 1 over 2 times R, which is 3 ohms, and C is 1 30th of a ferret. So notice that'll be 1 10th times 2 will 1 5th. So it gives us a value for 5 for the alpha. And for the omega sub naught, that'll be 1 over the square root of LC which is equal to 1 over the square root of L, which is 60 millihenries, 0.06. And we multiply that times 1 30th, and then we take the square root of that. Hmm. Better grab a calculator for that. So 0 0.06 divided by 30, and we take the, uh, the square root of that, and then we take the inverse of that, and we get 22.36. So that will be equal to 22.36. So we can see that the alpha is smaller than omega sub naught, which implies a underdamped circuit. Of course, I kind of gave that away already by drawing the circuit right here, where I showed the oscillating voltage across the resistor, which is an indication of underdamping. So that means that S1, S2, S1, uh, comma, S2 uh, is going to be equal to alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared minus omega sub naught squared. And then you realize that this quantity here will be a negative quantity. The square root negative quantity will be imaginary. And so that means that this portion right here, so the, um, the square root of the alpha squared minus omega sub naught squared, that will be equal to the damped oscillation frequency, which we're going to need to plug into the equation. So let's try to calculate that. So we have 5 squared, so we have 5 squared minus 22.36 squared. So I'll go ahead and plug in the numbers so you can see where it came from. So we have 5 squared minus 22.36 squared, and that gives us an oscillation frequency. Of course, we need to take the absolute value of that because we know that it's going to be a real number when we take the oscillation frequencies, the damped oscillation frequency. So square that, it's 500. Uh, subtract 25 from that, minus 25, take the square root, we end up at 21.79.
So omega sub d is equal to 21.794, if you want to go one more decimal place. And now we can write the general equation of what the circuit will look like. So we can say that the voltage as a function of time is going to be equal to the quantity A times the cosine of omega sub d, which is 21.794 times t, plus B times the sine of 21.794 t, and the whole thing multiplied times e to the minus alpha t, and alpha is 5, so that would be minus 5t. So that's the general equation of the voltage across the resistor, which means we need to find A and B. So we know already that voltage at time equals 0 is going to be equal to 12. All right, so plugging that in, we can say V at t equals 0, which is equal to 12, is equal to, we have A times the cosine of 0, cosine of 0 is 1, that gives us A, and the sine of 0 is 0, so the B drops off, and we have E to the 0, which is 1, and so simply we end up with A equals 12. So now we need to find B. To find B, we're going to need to take the derivative of that. So let's try that over here. So V prime of T is equal to, or we could simply say dV dt, dV dt is equal to the derivative. So we take the first times the derivative of the second. So we end up with, uh, derivative of the second would be minus five times A cosine of 21 point 794t plus b times the sine of 21.794t times e to the minus 5t. So it's the derivative of this, which gives us minus 5 times this, times the first, plus the second, which is e to the minus 5t, times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of this will become, the derivative of the cosine is a negative sine, and we have to multiply this by the angle, so it would be negative 21.794a times the sine of 21.794t. And derivatives of the sine is the cosine, so it would be plus 21.794 times b times the cosine of 21.794t, like this. So that's the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. Now we want to set that equal to zero. But we have to realize, if you think of an RC circuit like this, an RC circuit, we can then say that the dVdt of that RC circuit is going to be equal to the voltage at zero divided by R times C. All right, so that's going to be equal to the voltage zero, which would be 12, divided by three times 1 30th. And also, we realize that it's going to be negative. We need to put a negative in there because the voltage is going to drop uh, across the capacitor. And so that would be 1 tenth, divided by 1 tenth is multiplied times 10, which is equal to minus 120 volts when that's equal to zero, when time is equal to zero. Can't forget that. So that would be the initial rate of change of the voltage with respect to time. And then if we set this equal to zero, when time equals zero, we can then solve for B. That's what we're trying to do. Of course, A is already 12, so we can replace A by 12. And there's an A right here, we can replace A by 12 like that. Okay, so dVdt. When time is equal to zero, is equal to minus 120 volts, which is equal to. Now notice when time is equal to zero, cosine of, of that goes to one. We have minus five times 12, which is minus 60. But this part goes to zero because the sine of zero is zero. And e to the zero becomes one. And let's see, I probably want to put a little bracket on it like this. And then over here, notice that this goes to zero, but that does not go to zero. So we have, this is zero, so we have plus 21.794b times the cosine of zero, which is one. And this here should give us the value for b, because that's what we're looking for. Okay, 
So bringing that across, that gives us a minus 60, so this is equal to, or actually, I don't want to put the equal sign. There I go, minus 120 plus 60 is minus 60 is equal to 21.794B. So B is equal to, Sixty divided by twenty-one point seven nine four equals that would be a minus minus two point seven five three. And my a was equal to twelve. So now I can plug in that into the general equation right there. So we can then say that the voltage as a function of time is equal to a, which is equal to twelve, twelve times the cosine of 21.794t plus b, and b is equal to this, but b is a negative, so minus 2.753 times the sine of 21.794t, and the whole thing multiplied times e to the minus 5t. Now, Remember that we're trying to find the time to reach V max. And this gives us the voltage as a function of time. So we know that it's going to go up and back down and oscillate because that's under damping. We want to catch that first maximum. And of course, how do you find the maximum? You take the derivative and set the derivative equal to zero. So that's the plan to get the time when it reaches the maximum voltage at the first point right there. That would be the first rise which means we also need the equation for the derivative of the voltage with respect to time, so then we can set it equal to zero. Notice this is part one. We're going to raise the board and then continue with the derivative of this and setting that equal to zero. So what we need to know now is the dv dt as a function of time is equal to, and where's our dv dt? It's right here, and we can now replace a and b and calculate all that out. So in this case, we end up at minus 60, so this would be minus 60 times the cosine of 21.794t, and plus b times the sine of this, but of course b is equal to minus this, and we have to multiply times the minus 5. So let's try that. So times 5 equals, that gives us, um, where were we? That's a minus times a minus gives me a plus. So plus 13.765 times the sine of 21.794t, and I multiply times e to the minus 5t. It would be the first part of the derivative. Now the second part of the derivative, put a bracket around that. So now we have this portion right here, and a is equal to 12. So now we have 12 times 21.794 equals, that's a minus, so that would be plus, a minus 261.53 times the sine of 21.794t. Okay, so we have the first portion. Now the second portion, so we have b, which is a negative quantity, times 21.794, so 2.753 times 21.794, and it's minus, so minus 60, minus 60 times the cosine of 21.794t, and the whole thing multiplied times e to the minus 5t. All right, so there we also have the derivative of the voltage with respect to time and the voltage with respect to time. And now we're ready, we have it all set up to go to part two where we're going to plug in, well, we're going to plug in, no, we're going to set the derivative equal to zero and find the T that will then be appropriate to find the time at which we reach the maximum voltage. So that's the goal. So that, for that we need part two. <laughs> Let's see if I got it correct so far. <clears throat> Yeah, all well, that seems to be correct so far. Did I get the right value for B minus 2.7? Yeah, everything looks good so far.